training again, too. They, they put us right back on training, never let up on the training. And uh, that's with tanks and artillery fire and that. Up in the Downs in, the, in England. And uh, then we got word one night in August now, on the 18th of August. They said, uh, put on your best uniform and put full pack and ammunition. So we had to stock up on ammunition and uh, grenades, put them inside your tunic and, uh, and your old rifle and then we had brandishing machine guns, so we always had a team because you had to carry an extra barrel and extra ammunition for them. So we we had usually four on a team to to do the gun. And they said, "Come on, you got to get in the trucks." We thought, "Well, it's just another part of the the training again." Then somebody let it slip where we were going. Said we're going down to the, down to Southampton to the docks. Well, that did it. We knew where we were going. But we thought, well, maybe it's just we didn't know we were going to the app. We just thought, well, it's, it's, we're going on to the boats again to do some training, get, jumping down into the boat, boats and so on. And uh, then we get there and we get on board and then they tell us we're going to Dieppe. It wasn't any cheering at all, just plain old silence. Nobody clapped or yelled or whooped or hollered because, uh, well, Jesus, you know, the Germans, they, they had a good good spy thing going. They knew damn well that we were going to try it again. If we, if we started to cross, they didn't know where we were going. So, we, uh, I, got on, I got on the, uh, I thought I was going on the mothership, as we called it, that, that carried their landing craft, you know. But I didn't. They put me on with the tanks in those tank landing craft. They put the tanks in the middle and we, uh, us alongside them. And we went over. And we're supposed to land in, in darkness, but it was bloody well daylight before we even seen shore. And uh, we get, uh, we get uh, going in and all of a sudden we're getting some fire. We could hear things hitting the hitting the boat and that. And the only thing we had on the boat was one of those big uh, anti-aircraft guns. They go boom, 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 and there's no use. There's no use firing anything because you couldn't see anything to fire at. So, but they sure seen us. <laughs> The bullets were really, really whizzing. So we get in them and, and we, the old front of the boat goes down. Now that's our thing because we had to run out ahead of the tanks. And, uh, and we, land, we landed in water about up to our waist. So we waded through that, waded through shore, and we're getting fire from, from, from shore. And, uh, we, uh, the fellas are, are dropping all around, all around me they were dropping down because they've been hit. And uh, I made it to the wall and there's quite a few of us made it to the wall. There, there was beach, real stony beach. We expected a nice sandy beach with, you know, so did the tanks, and uh, 
So we, we made it to the wall and the tanks were having a heck of a time. Going on the stones, the stones were about, were about this big. The, the stones on the beach just, and they were flipping up and getting into their tracks and they were throwing the tracks, breaking the tracks on the, on the tanks. The tanks were fit, like, they could have landed the tanks in deeper water because the tanks had their, their exhaust pipe and their intake pipe up above the turret even. To go, they could go under the water if they had to. But they didn't, they were lucky to get there and come out the same as we did. And I got to I got to the the wall, and the engineers they had what they called Bangalore torpedoes. They're just a big piece of pipe, about ten foot or so long, and they're loaded with explosive. And they're supposed to push that under the barbed wire, and then light the fuse, and. Uh, I should say ignite the fuse, they didn't light it, they ignite the Bangalore torpedo instead of pushing it underneath the wire, you know, working it through underneath the wire, they just threw it up on top of the wire and they detonated it right away and the darn thing started slipping back, it wouldn't stay there. So one of the fellows from Leamington, a little fellow called McCormick, Everett McCormick, he reached up and pushed on the thing and it kept coming back so he just stood there and, and held on to it. And when it went off, that was the end of him. But he saved the rest of us that were crouched behind the wall there. So I went on, and I went on from there and run across my, uh, my officer. Mr. Green. So I went across him. He had his leg blown right off. One of the mortar bombs had hit him. And uh, he, he, uh, but the, the, the medics, the medics were there looking after him. But he didn't make it. He, uh, he, uh, he must have bled to death. So I went on and kept going along the wall and because uh, we were supposed to, what we were supposed to do is get up into the houses and beyond the houses and uh, it was a heck of a big promenade, oh further than from here across the street real big long promenade, just a big open space. But finally I got to a place where the fellows had got underneath the barbed wire and had pushed it up with the rifles and that. So I got my turn to go through and I, I went through, and I, as I was going through, I was going on my back because we were using our rifles to to reach and push it up and then pull it down, and the barbed wire would come down too and reach go ahead and push it up again. And uh, so I'm, I'm going along, and all of a sudden, something hit my chest, and I looked down, I looked like up at it, and uh, it was one of what they called a potato masher, one of their grenades. I landed right on my chest. Uh, well, this is the end, and I'm bleeding anyway from all the shrapnel and that that's going around. My ear and that, I'm under my arm, and all of a sudden it went puff. It was a dud, <laughs> but it did set my tunica fire.
you know, burn it, right? And uh, so I kept going, and I finally got through the barbed wire, and I got up onto the promenade, and then about 20 of us made it through that opening underneath the barbed wire, and we got beside a tank that had got up. There's two tanks made it up onto the promenade, all the rest got, got stuck on the beach. <laughs>